Darren the Gorilla Till. It's been a little while since we've been able to It hasn't sit down been like that this. long, John. <laughs> it has. I think the last time I came down here and we did something similar, you'd just got the bus in to the gym. I just had my teeth done, hadn't I? Remember? Well, that's the big easy. change. I had a hole, remember oh. I had a hole and the guy it the drill, broke it. it broke, didn't it, the tooth? Yeah. And I got the bus in. I remember, yeah. You remember? Wow. Things have changed since then though, right? I've did all I'm in a mini bus now a little. <laughs> And, and your teeth are repaired. My teeth are looking good, John. They're, I mean, you can sell them. You can they, are, they are spectacular. Uh, so, with all of that, you know, what are the big highlights been for you in your UFC career? I think if I put, I can put a, num a joint number one, can I? I can put a joint number one for me was Liverpool, fighting in Liverpool yeah. against two or four things, everyone knows, and fighting at Madison Square Garden after. So, so that was like me come back from two vicious defeats. So they, I put them at joint, like joint number one, sort of. And uh, to be totally honest, number two for me, even though it's a, it was a loss, is, is Whitaker. Like I loved everything about Abu Dhabi, fighting without a crowd and fighting the man of four, fighting the fight we fought. So they're like, I've had a lot of good highlights mm. in and out, but for me, joint number one would have to be them too because they're special to me. Yeah, sure. Now, we have to talk that life isn't always quite so rosy and you've had to bounce back from adversity and, and some setbacks. You know, how have you managed to do that? Because they've got to be tough on a young man when you get so close and just not quite there. Uh, if I can describe it for myself, John, and I've been thinking about this lot, a lot lately, uh, I'm not one of them guys who like meditates or not, and I should do more, but... That surprises me, you know. Yeah, it does. <laughs> we know that doesn't. <laughs> if I can describe it from my point of view and my perspective, a lot of guys get in this sport and they're like, oh, I nearly touched the bra. Well, OK, I'll tell, I'll tell a story for like, whatever, the next 50 years, I'll tell people. I nearly got there. And they're happy with just of being in the sport and then getting out and going on to do something else. You see, for me, John, right? Now, there's a lot of stuff I love in this world. There's a lot I, you, you know me well, you know I love my cars and there's a lot of stuff I love and a, a lot of luxuries and a lot of other things I could be doing. But you know, like when I sit here and I take everything away from me, like I, you could take me, rip me down to my bare skin and, and take everything away. Like I know I want to be one of the best fighters ever to have lived in the sport of MMA. Not boxing, not anything else, but MMA. So like, strip all that away and I don't want to be sat here next year going, do you know what? Sold out this, sold out that, beat him, beat him. I had a good run there and people will talk about me and people will say, oh, that Darren Till. I don't want that like to ever be said. I want people to say, see him there, Darren Till. See the things he done. Look back on it. He was one of the best ever. So that's like, that's, that's my mentality still going forward and it's going to be like that for the next however many years I'm in this sport, eight years. Whether my body gets better with age, which I feel like it is doing, so that's, that's how I think of it, me. Other people probably different, you know, go on to do other things and that. Like a lot of people have after careers, like they'll go, like, like if we take Bisping for example, like he had one of the best careers in my opinion in the UFC and now he's like sort, sort of done. You know what, I've done what I've done, I'm going into commentary. I don't have that thought right now. I just want to be the best. So whatever that takes. And then after it all, when it's all said and done, I might not ever be involved in fighting again. I might just say, you know what? I can actually sit back and go, Look at my body of work. Yeah. Look at that. I, I was I was a two-time division champion. I beat him. I beat her. Not her, sorry. <laughs> girls. Why did I say that? I have no What's idea. What's this? <laughs> the one girl wouldn't fight Amanda Nunes. <laughs> She's a beast. But mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? I can look and go. I beat all them guys. I've done this. I've done that. Look at what I sold out. You know, I sold out Anfield for the first time. Stuff like that. Memorable things. And then I can I can sit there with the iPad and go, girls. Instead of watching. Peppa Pig, <laughs> let's watch your dad there. Let's watch the gorilla. Let's watch the gorilla, let's watch your dad. <laughs> when they're a little bit older, let's watch your dad. Uh, look what your dad's achieved, so you can do it as well. You've, you've pretty much fast-forwarded my interview to like all the bits that I wanted to pick up, but uh, you know, I don't need to be here, really. We'll just, we'll just turn just the mic over. Go on, please, mate. Yeah, the I will the, soon. The soon. bus is coming. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting you talk about those bits so early on in this conversation because I, I was going to get to it, because right now I think a lot of people see Darren as the funny guy. And it's easy to not take you so seriously with your fight yeah, aspirations. But I think it's important for you to underline 
this is still the core of what I'm trying to do. The other stuff is just a, a little yeah. sideshow. I think people see me like, <laughs> I think people are just scared to say stuff on, on social media and around me. He's like, he's just such a troll. Like, he's, he's just such a funny troll. Like, he's just trolling everyone all the time. And do you know why I've sort of done that as well now, John? Is obviously, I do not care what anyone thinks or says to me. <laughs> Colin's the only guy who just does it. And he even though I still don't take it over. But I don't need to be constantly telling people that I'm training hard. I feel like, all of us as collective fighters in the UFC, we're all always training hard. We got we got to the UFC and we got to the top of the, the food chain of fighting by training hard and being smart and you know doing all the right things. So from from my point of view, from my sort of thinking of it all, people are gonna get a little bit sick of me just telling everyone how hard I'm training every day. And and let's say on a Monday morning if they're waking up from a hangover, they're like, I'll oh, get to f down. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of your training so hard. So I like to keep it enjoyable. Yeah. I like to scare sponsors away with all my controversy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just it, John. Like I'm not I'm not trying to tell everyone every week how hard I'm training. Everyone yeah. everyone knows already how hard I train and you know, a little photo here and there, till still grafting, perfect. Yeah. But, keeping us entertained as well. Good or bad, I'm keeping everyone entertained. You are you are indeed. Now there are people, companies that make a living out of being a social media strategist, they'll tell you what to post, when to post, on what platform. So here's the thing, the Darren Till Social Media <laughs> Academy, right? <laughs> What's the best strategy for people to use? <laughs> controversy, isn't it? I just, the, the, the Darren Till scale of social media would just be controversial memes, just like, just get all the Karens in this world, <laughs> all the snowflakes just commenting on your memes, that's just... That's the key, is it? That's, that's what I do. That's what I do in a job. Yeah, well, it certainly is. Yeah. So we're talking about changes. You now have three daughters, yeah. uh, multiple businesses, but you mentioned it, and the most important question out of all of that, how many cars have you had since, uh, since you joined the UFC? Because it's been a few. Wow. You, how many have you seen? Uh, I've seen, seen? I must have seen, mate, probably... And all your dream cars, you always say to Yeah, you, all right, don't rub it in. <laughs> probably, probably like six or seven. Yeah. And I know I'm probably way off the mark. Right. My two top favourites, I've got a joint two top favourites, probably was, I had a Range Rover SVR, did you see that one? I did, yeah, and I heard it as my well. My last one, when you last interviewed me, RSQ8, yeah. the purple one, or oh, purple blue, so they're my two favourites, but John, I've had some, I've had some, I've had some terrific cars, mate. I've had some proper, like, my Bugatti Veyron's my, my dream car. I was going to say, I didn't see that one. No. Well, that's, there, yeah. It's on its way. <laughs> it's on its way, yeah. But yeah, I've had some cars, mate. I've had some cars. What is it about cars and, and maybe so, let's talk luxury items. Why yeah. is it important for you to have those things in a sport that's so tough? Two things, John, right? I'll tell you the thing about cars is because I'm a proper adrenaline junkie, me. Like, I, you, you know me, mate. I love living life very, very close to that line. You know, the danger Fast. line. Fast, yeah. <laughs> Everything, quads, cars, fucking doing absolute madness. That is what I, I've, I've calmed it down a hell of a lot. Got my girlfriend to thank for that and Colin. But yeah, and the other thing is, because when I was growing up, John, yeah, I always believed, but I always disbelieved as well. Like I always seen nice cars and nice watches from, I've always had like a lot of older friends as well being around the gym and I'd like, I'm not gonna name this guy, but I remember years ago when I came into Team Car One and I remember I put my stuff on the side of the ring. This was only when it first started and one of the guys who was here, he was a top guy, I'm not going to say his name, he, 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 he come in, took his Rolex off his wrist and put it on the... I just looked and I just went, can I see that? And he's like, yeah, go ahead. And I was just looking and I just thought, wow. And like, 100% of that until I was like, I want to get one of them. And 100% of that until I was like, you'll never get something like that. So I, I like to make sure that I've got stuff like that. I haven't got the Rolex, no, I mean, Mr. Spear, but there's a good car on its way, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's... that's that was my mentality, even though, even though I proper, proper believed that one day I'd be a millionaire and, and I'd have all nice stuff, I proper, proper didn't believe that I'd have it, which is a mad mentality, in it? Mm. And it's, it was like a double mentality, like, you're going to get that, and there's like another part of you saying, you're never going to get that done. What, why do you think there was that? I don't know, I've always been that way. I ask, uh, ask people who know me proper closely, they know I'm a very, uh, there's a word for it, uh, pessimist or something. Or, pessimist, yeah. Yeah, uh, like... I'm very, I'm very invested in myself and believe, and at the same time, I'm not. Like, I don't believe as well, which is crazy, because you know me, mate. I'll, I'll but with fighting, you've always been steadfast by saying you're going to be the champion, yeah. and you're, you have a quest great, for greatness. greatness. Yeah, but and 
and I don't believe it at the same time. Okay. It's mental. I don't think I've ever said this, have I? I don't think I've ever brought I'm not it sure. up. I don't think I have, but it's just that we're on the subject and it's just easy talking. I've always fully believed, like, and now I tell you, I know I'm one of the best fighters in the world, I'm going to be one of the best, but I disbelieve it as well. It's mad that, isn't it? It's mad that I can just come out and say it. A lot of fighters wouldn't be able to come out and say it, but mm. I'm not saying that. It's a weakness, it's insecurities, but I don't, I'm not bothered by insecurities or weakness, that's why I'll say it. It's good to have that self-talk, though, isn't it? Because it, it helps yeah. you improve. Yeah, I think it does, and I think not too much of it as well, you know, not standing there in the mirror for hours a day, like fighting with your demons and fighting with yourself or this or that. Just have quiet talks with yourself sometimes. Like when I, I finished training this morning, I'd done a hard session and I sat there for maybe five minutes and just went through a few things, went over to the mirror and you asked me this years ago why a call was called and I just went over to the mirror for two minutes and just went, Dad, you're the best, don't forget that. And then that little thing at the back went, no, you're not, you're the best. And I was like, no, I'm the best, you're the you're the best. Fighting with myself. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of sounds like kind of crazy. Sounds like but me, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I do remember. It was one of the things that really stuck out to me when I first There's a came photo down on me. Instagram. I've, I've saved a photo. It's in my archives. Yeah. I've, got, I've got a few there. I'll bring it back up. Yeah, no, that's, that's very cool. I'm like looking in the mirror after hard on you. Like, why are you looking at yourself? I'm just, just remind yourself to like you did. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that goes in any career, don't it, though, John? Like anything you do in this life, you have got to genuinely love it. And you've got to genuinely like tell yourself, you're the yeah. don't forget that, mate. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? Going back, just before we get into the fight stuff proper, um, you have now gotten some business interests as well. Um, what are they and why is it important for particularly professional fighters in mixed martial arts to, to have a couple of little side hustles along the way or why you think it's important? Yeah, I, I don't know, John. Listen, I don't claim. I'm, I've got involved in a few businesses. I've invested, yeah, I, I like to say wise, in a few businesses. I think some of it's just, fighting's not always going to be here, is it, mate? And like, when I retire, I want to have something, something else to do. Even though I'm going to be in the gym and I want to earn my black belt at some point, uh, and I want to help Colin, you know, I'll, I'll probably potentially open an, another team car one and have kids coming through with there for Colin and I'll be in here helping all, all the guys who've probably looked up to me over the years. But I want to have other little avenues and other stuff that I'm a little bit passionate about. You know, like, I like my watches. You know, I've obviously got a watch brand that's on the rise, like we're doing really well, like really, really well on Marvy watches and other little things that I won't mention just, just yet. You, you know a few of them, me and you talk closely, but I think it's just good and it's just wise to have another little bit of a, a little stream of incomes and something that you're a little bit passionate about and, but, you know, have your time a little bit, a little bit, how do you say, spaced out, you know, not, not, it doesn't have to be all Jim, Jim, have you ever heard the saying, anything or too much is, is bad for you, innit? Of course. You, know, you eat 20 bananas, mate, it's bad for you. Bananas yeah. are good for you. You eat 20 bananas, they're bad for you. Yeah. You know, you brush your teeth 20 times a day, it's bad for you. So, fighting 24 hours. Do you have hours, to brush your teeth 20 times? I don't brush my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> just, I wake up and they're white. I bet they are. Stop it, John, with the little jokes. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let, let's draw a line in, in what we talk about fight-wise, because a lot of people know your journey now. So, let's yeah, talk course. middleweight Darren. But, but remind us why we had to see middleweight down and not, not down at 170. You just see middleweight down in there, scoff three meals. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I could probably still make welterweight. No, you couldn't. Oh, sorry. Could you? I think. No, one, so, I mean, you, I you think, know your body. I know Usman wants to fight me, Kamara Usman. I know he said that. He said I still want to fight Till. And we've got a little bit of history. You know, good guy, sound guy. I think. It's him and Leon destined to fight Leon, going to take that title, but why can't I go down for one last hurrah and see if I can, you know, get, grab that strap that I was meant to have in my head and Colin's head, obviously. Uh, but just, it was the lifestyle, John, like, it was always, like, more focus on weight than training a lot. I think I just outgrew welterweight a little bit too much, like, with my leg shape and, you know, I've, I'm a big guy up top as well. It's, just outgrew it a little bit. So instead of the rigorous cuts, I've done rigorous cuts, man. Now it's, I don't even think about the way cutting on me. So just, I, don't, I don't give it a second thought. So what does that mean? You, you spoke lifestyle. What, what have been the positive lifestyle changes that I'm sure your missus is happy about and, and people around you? Usually I'd probably make a joke now, John, and say, oh, can I eat five guys? Do you know what, mate? I'm trying to tighten the eating up. Like, I like to eat a lot, but eat a, I'm, I'm, you know, Colin's on at me. I'm trying to eat a lot of goodness. and. Stay, stay in physical top. Do you know, do you know what's quite annoying, John? Is I'm doing all this and, and you saw that here this morning and you know I'm saying all this and, and 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 I have to do that. I have to try and take every little advantage because a lot of people aren't doing it like me, and and 
I'll have a lot of like good friends like my, my friend Bishping to back me up on that. A lot of people are doing other things that they shouldn't be doing. So I need to take every other little advantage that I can be doing to make sure that it is still a level playing field because at the moment it's not a level playing field for most of us. So your entry into the middleweight division, it was straight in. Yeah. You, you take on a former title challenger. Was, was yeah. that the way you wanted it though? Yeah, and a little bit of regret, John. Uh, I've got a little bit of regret, right? And I want to tell you why I've never told anyone this, but I was thinking about this just a few weeks ago. And Chael Sonnen actually said it. And at the time I was like, no, Chael. But maybe it was because I was feeling down about the two previous losses at welterweight, which I should have just forgot about straight away. But, um, but the fight before that, Adesanya and Gaslam nearly killed each other. Like, literally, that was one of the best fights I've ever seen. Yeah. Gaslam, unbelievable. Just big Mexican, so good. And took Adesanya to depths he's never been to before, you know, like, literally. And then I come in and just, like, you can say whatever you want about Gaslam, but he couldn't touch me, mate. Couldn't touch me. I put on a clinic and, like, that was what I needed to do against him to come back confident. A part of me feels like I've just got on the mic there and been like, hang on a minute. I've just come in and be the, the second top guy. Give me Adesanya. And Chelsea Sonnen said I should have done that. And I was like, no. And maybe I should have, but I never. So, so what? Come into the middleweight division and, and you know, I've, I beat Gaslam and then obviously I've just fought Robert Whittaker in a close fight. I lost, you know, maybe if a defender won extra takedown, I won, but I lost the fight and now I've seen what Whittaker's done to a few opponents. I think he's just absolutely phenomenal. It just shows me where I'm at in the division, mate. Mm. It shows me. I want to go back to that uh, Adesanya uh, Gaslam fight. What did you make of Adesanya? That, that thing we see circulate so much where he's in the corner going, I I'm willing to die. Loved it. Loved it. That's what it's got to take. People say, oh, it's a stupid happy pit. You, you mean, if you've got that, if you've got that much skin invested into this, as you say, as as Adesanya as, as and I know I have in all these fighters, that's what you are prepared to do. Remember that video that circulates to me going, oh, I don't care about my kids and it just got com completely blew out of context. Yeah, it was like, out of context, yeah. I absolutely... The, the only thing I do now when I get to the gym, I just want to go and see my kids and all on FaceTime, my kids in Brazil, like, I love and adore my kids. It wasn't saying that, it was saying I am prepared to do anything to get to where I need to be. Nothing's going to get in my way, sort of, if I can translate it. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, things you say nowadays get completely... T we call them Karens, Karen Gooden. Karen Till. <laughs> Karen Gooden. <laughs> Karen Till. But, but I love that video. I want a bit of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's like a, a goosebump moment. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. You guys are certainly certainly a different breed. So w with all of that, it's been a, it's been a bit of a, a, a rocky path, hasn't it? Well, your whole career, really. Whole life. You've uh, yeah. I mean, and I, and I will tread back in that direction in a second. But I, I feel sympathy for the injury list that you've encountered. I mean, can you just rattle off a couple that you've been having even in, in recent times? So what month are we in, John? <laughs> can you just tell me what month? So we're in July, are we? Yeah. For what, three, was it three or four months ago, I broke my collarbone. Like, I broke it. And a week later, I was back in the gym. I was determined. I was like, I'm not letting this get to me. And just like, mate, it's honest to God, right? It's injury after injury. And I'm not trying to take any away. All these other fighters, they have the same things. It's just like, man, it can be disheartening, John. Especially if you're having four for a Like, I need to be fighting, mate. This is what I'm built for. I'm, I'm, I am a... I'm a bill for fighting, like I'm a fighting machine, you know. If you speak to anyone, they'll know that's what I'm about and everyone knows what I'm about, you know. Funny that I'm whatever, I am built for fighting. And, uh, mate, it's tough, man, you know, just when you're getting these injuries, like, it's very, very, it can be very disheartening. And I've seen a lot of people quit and a lot of people retire because of it. You had that fight with uh, Robert Whittaker that you, you spoke about. I was very privileged to be on the mic that night and it was a, a real chess match. Very, very tight. Stress match, I call it. Stress match. Stress Whoa. match. I love that little uh, um, that thing end. you and him had yeah. where... When he's going to me, that's all you could. And I'm like, I know, mate, I'm trying to get you. I'm trying to see what he does. I am trying to move a shoulder, move something, and see. I'm, anal I'm not looking in Robert Whittaker's eyes. I'm looking, like, there on Robert Whittaker, there, there. And I'm trying to see what these mechanisms do. So I do something... Okay, right, I know every time I do that, he does this, right? Next time I do that, something's coming to catch him. I don't waste shots. Sometimes if people watch the UFC, you'll see a guy, I swear to God, right, and I laugh about it, and he'll just throw a front kick. I've one of them. 
why are you from kicking the air? Do you know how much any energy you waste in that octagon, John, under them bright blue lights, yeah? When you walk in, mate, your energy's gone straight away. For five rounds, you need to have, you need to be fit, mate, you need to have energy. And there's a guy throwing front kicks there for fun. Mate, you're wasting energy. Stop it. Like Michael Pereira, big fan of him, mate, big fan of his fighters now. Stop, like, doing oh. unnecessary. You can do everything, mate, but just do it if it's going to work. Stop the unnecessary stuff. Like, I'm not going to go in and go, right, I know how good my left hand is. I'm just going to throw for fun. No, there's a setup to everything. There's a setup to everything. You might just say, tell me, throw his left hand. I set it up so good, mate. So unbelievably good. How good is Whitaker that he wasn't biting on some of these? Very feints? good, mate. Very good. I want to run it back with Whitaker. I know. I've. I know. I've been in with him for 25 minutes now. I know what's what. I want to run it back with him. He won't be taking me down this time on me little ruptured <laughs> knees and that throwing them kicks. Brilliant fighter. Very good that he didn't. I caught him out a few times. You know, like first round when he ran in, I just thought, right, there's the other bump, and uh, other things like that. But it was a stress match. It wasn't a fight. It was a stress match and. You know, a lot of people won't... You, you John, you're a big fight fan. You'll be able to take a, a lot of uh, enjoyment from what we were doing. Like, Witter was doing things to me, and I was like, OK, what's he trying to do to me? And OK, it's, it was just... It was that meet, and we're trying to see... Come on, who's going to fall first? So off the back of that fight, you tried to come back, but the injury that mm. you incurred during that fight, yeah. then you weren't able to, to no, fight I was Manson. fighting one of the guys from uh, Lord of the Rings, and... Uh, <laughs> You had to get it in there early. I haven't even been able to say his name yet. Well, Oh, he's Master Oh. <laughs> well, let, well, let's talk about that. Because I, the, the funny thing is, for me, I was in this very gym talking to you about that fight ahead of, ahead of the main event. Yeah. And you were being super respectful at this point. Because at that point, we hadn't really heard a great deal from Marvin Vittori. I'd had a few notes from the UFC about his interview. Of course. And I was actually like asking you some and you were so respectful what changed i'm still respectful well of, i'm of, not sure but i mean if you were to ask <laughs> marvin vittori in his camp i'm not i'm not so sure i think my name's a bit sour in that camp. maybe so it's, it's trash there well not his, his, his coach here rafa Cordero. yes Mass respect legend. Him. he's a legend absolutely every time i've seen him as well he's been with like verdum and that and they've always come up and been like, very respectful they know they know the talk what it yeah. is but Still the same energy, still the same mindset for Marvin, mate. Like I love his grind, I love his, I love his thing. He know, he knows that. I DM him on the regularly. He knows that. <laughs> <laughs> like got the same mindset for him, mate. Like you know, he works hard, man, and he believes. He's very emotionally invested right now. I feel like he's got to that top five now, and we're all taking snippets at him. I think I started it. I'm sorry, but he's, he's he needs to step back and right. I'm a hard worker. I'm tough as nails. No one's been able to get me out of there. Okay, Sam, what else says? You know what I mean? But yeah. But the thing that done my head in was, right, John, and it didn't do me head in as such, I just looked at it and thought, oh, f Marvin. Like, I'm there, you're coming down the gym, John. You done the interview at what? Was it 10 o'clock at night? And I was debating whether to train after it. What did they do? I trained. Like, I'm grinding, I'm grinding, I'm grinding, I'm grinding the body, I'm grinding the mind. I'm evolving, I'm evolving. And then a freak accident, you know, I broke my collarbone. I actually considered, I was like, Col what can we do to make me fight? Like, can I get injections? What can I do? Speak to the UFC. Spoke to Dana. The phone call was just like silence for two minutes. He was just like, well, and I was just like, well, it was just silence. And it was, it was devastating for me, mate. It was devastating. It's like, I've got a lot, a lot of respect for Conor. You know, the way he fought with his bad thing and that, and he, he's like, well, Mate, if I would have been able to fight with that broken collarbone, I was fighting, mate. There was no way, two ways about it. And then he's like, I don't even know if Till's injured. And I'm like, mate, don't even go down that path. It's like, he's gone private on Instagram and he's, uh, he hasn't shown us anything. So what? I don't need to justify nothing to you, mate. You just need to put up and shut up and know that I was injured. Otherwise, I was fighting you. Do you think I'm scared of fighting you, mate? Come on, let's get, let's, let's be real now. Let's just get away from all the, the troll and that. Let's be real, mate. I've, I'm famous for an interview in Liverpool Arena saying I'll fight anyone anyway, I'm not scared of anyone. I'm not scared of you, mate. I ain't pulling out of fights unless I've, unless I've got to, and that was a do or die situation, you know what I mean? The UFC were gutted, mate. The UFC were gutted. And I just seen him say that, and I was just like, everyone back him up, even Kevin Holland and all like, mate, don't, one thing about him, mate, he's ready to fight, he's, he's up for it. Don't start this, and so I was just come out with this big text. And everyone was just like, has he really just called him an orc? 
and then now me and Marlon don't speak. <laughs> <laughs> you look devastated by that. Listen, um, with, with all of that said, though, that, and we can tell by your reaction to that, it, the frustration that you must be facing. You must be hungry, itchy knuckles. It's how you feed your family. Mm. When someone does that, you know, how, how, do you, how do you process all of that? Yeah. And, and what do you do when you're sitting on the sides with a broken collarbone? No, because I've had this before, John, because I remember, right? And, uh, you know, it's, it, was, it was funny. This guy actually doesn't even know this, and he'll, ne he'll never, he well, he'll know now, because I'm going to say his name, right? But he, in Brazil, he gave me a little bit of that, oh, I need to get where he's at now. You know, when I, I, I dislocated my shoulder and I had to get surgery. I remember being in Brazil, right, John? And I was just breaking through and everyone was talking about me because of the first debut I had and then the fight with Derby and everyone was like, this is the next guy. And being sidelined me for like 16 to 18 months, I was watching a certain guy being in Brazil from England, and his name's Mark Dear Casey, and he was just working his way up the ranks and I was like, oh my God, this guy is just fighting constantly. I need to be where he is now. And then, Another part of me was like, Till, relax, mate. You're 22, 23. Your time's going to come. Chill, bro. And, I'm, and, and that's it now. And it's the same thing now. And nothing, nothing can get inside of this. It's bulletproof. It's absolutely bulletproof. Especially not words. You cannot affect me with your words. So sitting there and watching the likes of Holland, Brunson, you got Uriah Halls up as well, Marvin Vittori. These are guys that weren't necessarily in the picture in the last couple of years, like in the top, top echelons of the title conversation. You're seeing them all come through now. It, it must be difficult just to, to wait. Yeah, it is, but I, one fight, and that's all it is for me, right? it takes one fight to go in there and absolutely put on a clinic. That's all it will take for me. Is Brunson the guy who's going to give you that canvas in which to put on this clinic? I hope so. I, I, I know for a fact I'm going in there and there's no two ways about it. I will be beating Brunson. Like he knows that as well. I think he knows deep down. I think he's scared of me. How, uh, how did this fight even come about? I don't know. I just messaged him. I was like, do you want to fight? Can you wait for me? He's like, oh man, I want to fight July. And I was like, who are you fighting, Brunson? I was like, who are you going to fight? You're not fighting Adesanya. So who else are you fighting who's got my name? Nobody, so shut the <laughs> up and let's fight in September. <laughs> shut your mouth. Because I just started putting loads of memes. <laughs> so this is like a private conversation between yeah, you and him? I was him. just, mate, I know Brunson. I know his manager, uh, Ali. I was like, Brunson, come on, mate. Let's fight. Speak to Ali, let's fight. You're, you're, you, you know where you're going, I know where I'm going. Let's fight, bro. Do you know what's interesting about this? A lot of people, they would need to dissect some of the words that you said over the years, is you've always had a mad respect for wrestlers. And then uh, and some of your critics would say the worst case scenario for Till is if he fights a wrestler. But you've, you've how, now actively gone after a wrestler. How, how can it be? Nobody has ever been able to take me down and keep me down. They cannot do it. It's simply, they simply don't do it. In the fifth round against Robert Whittaker, he took me down two or three times and I bounced back up on a torn MCL. Wrestlers do not phase me. I go after them because of what they are as people and as fighters. They're the toughest of the tough of the tough. The wrestlers do not phase me, mate. I can wrestle. I can defend wrestling. I did not spend four years in Brazil messing around. If anyone, I'll translate that, messing around. I, I was there for purpose and I'm here for purpose. And you've got a great team in which to challenge you with I like the wrestling to think so, as well. Yeah, you know, me coach Colin, you know, we do the right things. Yeah. I, I'm skin in the game with him, and he's skin in the game with me. That's enough for me. You are definitely going to get your wrestling challenged. And are you excited to... I know you don't, probably don't care too much about the naysayers, but are you excited about showing that full repertoire of defensive wrestling and maybe even a, a little offensive wrestling as well? A little... Yeah? Little, under, what are they called? I don't even know what they're called. High crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's the execution which is important there, not yeah, what the, the names execution, are. not the names, just getting yeah. in there, getting in. We'll see, mate, we'll see. Derek's a solid competitor, that's why I messaged them. You know, it wasn't all... I'm not... John, I'm always telling them, always, people just know what I'm about. But if I want to fight someone, I'm messaging them, and I'm like, come on, let's fight, mate. So what does this unlock for you if you get past Derek Brunson? put on a clinic against Derek, I'm fighting Adesanya, mate. That I'm, confident? Or I am fighting the champion. 
Stop trying to get under. He's, that confirmed. In my head, it's confirmed. That's all you need to know. <laughs> I hope so, yeah. Put on a clinic against Derek, then that's it. The champ's there for me. Whoever the champ may be, listen, Whitaker may beat others on your meet. Whitaker is phenomenal. Yeah, no. The I... division is stacked. It is, it is. Oh, I mean, we got. Maybe we've even got people fighting from. Where? What, what's. From Sauron? What's his name? The Orc? Marvin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> 2021 then, what's the, what's the perfect scenario? I, I want to fight twice, mate. I want to put on two clinics, you know. I'll just say it, John, I am the best fighter in the world. You still maintain that? I am the best fighter in the world, I know that. I know that. Deep down inside of me. There's a thing in the back of my head, and I'm going, no, you're not, you <laughs> you <laughs> f shut up, you. <laughs> I am the best fighter in the world. I know that, for a fact. What are the obstacles in your way for you to everything, truly prove that? Everything's against me, everything always, and that's how I love it. Everything in my life, outside and inside, everything is always against me. My own mind is against me. That's how I want it to be. I don't ever want that to change until I'm, I'm fully sat down. And it's never going to be one of these things with me. I am never, ever going to retire and come back. Once I'm retired, I'm retired. And that's all she wrote. So you can expect I'm only retiring until I've done what I've got to do. And you know what I want to do, John? But that's it, mate. Uh, everything's against me. My own f***ing body, yeah. All of this is against me. And my own mind's against me. There's, there's, you know. So what more do you want me to say? It's not like, ah, oh, the odds are against you because you're fighting in Vegas, mate. Everything's against me. It always has been. At this point, I want to... With that in mind, I want, to, I want to tread back. And your story, for people that don't know, it's well documented, but you got stabbed. And I think of what that horrific violent situation. It wasn't that bad, John. <laughs> well, I mean, for, for a kid like me down south, it's, yeah. uh, it, it, it's not Where's good. They're just stop giving us northern as a bad name. <laughs> it meant more like me. Yeah. I'm from a very nice postcode. Um, it's not even subway round yours, I've heard, John. <laughs> <laughs> so you have that situation, and then where you are now, presently, with everything that you've got, do you ever look back and think how terribly different your life could have turned out. No, John, listen, a lot of people like to say to me, oh, that was the key point here. It, it, it was, listen, I got stabbed, it was horrific. Like, the other day, just me, me, my car was like, fucking hell, I've never looked at your stab wounds properly, the proper in you know, I was like, yeah, you know, a proper got stabbed, like, a proper did get stabbed, like, and it's one of them things I can talk about, and, you know, it's nothing to be proud of getting stabbed, it's not, it's not a big thing. But to me, mate, as I've just said to you, every, everything from that and from before that, mate, like, there was, There'll be a book one day, you know, when I've finished my story, not right now, I'll write a book one day and I'll, there'll be a film. My life is a film, mate. Like, people know, the people that know me and know what I do and what I go through, and it, there will, it'll be a good film. It will be a good film, mate, and there'll be stuff said that people don't know, I'm never gonna bring it up, only until then, there's a time to bring it up, but it's always been against me before and after. Listen, I'm not saying, John, I've come from the slums of, like, Brazil or the slums of Mexico, you know, like, there's people, mate, who've had hard, yeah. hard upbringings and they're tough people, yeah? I wouldn't even want to compare. Listen, I've seen things in Brazil, mate, and listen, we are a luxurious country in comparison. We ain't got nothing bad, mate. We could never sit here and complain about the situation we're in, you know what I mean? Mm. And over there, mate, it's different. Trust mm. me, it's different. And... But just for me, mate, on my upbringing, it's always been against me. It's never been for me. And I love it like that. You, you mentioned movies and, and books. A man, of course, that has trodden the boards and laid the foundation for, for guys like yourself, Michael Bisping. Yes. He said he believes you're going to be a champion. What, what does it mean to have those words come out of his mouth? A lot, because not only is Bisping someone... I speak to Bisping a lot now, and, and we're close, and... He says, he doesn't give me advice much, you know, he just says little things like this and that, till, and I appreciate it because Bisping sees me for what I am as well. Like, I don't, there's not any way I am with Bisping that, like, we're talking on text or we're doing our interviews, I'm just the same, and I just, I speak to him, I want to speak to him, I don't speak to him like anything else, but at the same time, he knows what level of respect I've got for him. You see, like, Michael Bisping, and Jan Blachowicz and Charles Oliveira. Every single fighter nowadays does never have to be go, ah, oh, maybe it's not for me, because of them three guys, right? Because 
I remember when Charles Oliveira fought Andy Ogle from our gym and beat him in Brazil when I wasn't even in the UFC and it was in a place called, I'm trying to think of the name in Brazil, I can't remember right, and I remember just being in the stands, just being like, I can't wait to be here one day. Just looking, and then looking at Charles Oliveira, doesn't speak English, that's his own fault. I'll tell him that when I see him. You need to speak English, mate, come on, sort your head out. I'm stupid, he speaks Portuguese, let's go. But the, the road he's had, man, and he's champion. I know things about Charles Oliveira, people don't know. I know what his life is like in Brazil, mate. It ain't easy, trust me. He's called Charles the Bronx for a reason, mate. Like, that man needs to be a, 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 an inspiration to us all. So you get kicked down, you get kicked down, you get back up, you get kicked down, you get back up, 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 get kicked down again. Just look at Charles Oliveira and just look at Michael Bisping and just look at Jan Vlachovic and everything will be okay. I like it. Yeah, inspirational characters indeed. Very much so. Um, you are inspiring a lot of other people with some, some community efforts that you have gone in with uh, Jimmy Manua mm -hmm. and Leon Edwards with. Uh, and it's going back to that story of, of knife crime as well. Yeah. Obviously close to your heart, but what is it that you guys are doing? I, I just, I think it's a little bit closer to the heart of Leon, more than any of us, out of the three of us, or, you know, maybe Jimmy as well. It, like, he, he, Leon's had a, had a hard, mate. He doesn't speak as much as I do. Uh, you know, we've gone, grown quite close, me and Leon. He's a, he's, a, he's a sound guy, he's funny. We actually have a good laugh together, but... Jimmy got in touch and was just like, listen boys, we need to do something about knife crime. Like, it's getting so bad in London, it's getting bad in Birmingham. Leon's just lost us, uh, someone very close to him. So we know what it's like up your end, do you know what I mean? Let's do something. I was just like, whatever needs to be done, we'll do it. You know what I mean? So hopefully, mate, let's say we can change five people's lives out of each city, mate. That's enough, innit? Do you not think that's enough? I've I seen a horrific, this is the worst thing I've ever seen the other day, the worst, John, not ever worse. There's a few guys in the field, they're only kids, John, and I mean, the 14 and 13s, and one of them stabbing them, the other one. And I'm like, if I'm looking at them and the 22, I'm half going, oh, okay. The 13, John, what future is for them that they go out in the morning, put on the little knife socks and go, right, I've got me little knife now. I, I just don't understand that thought process. I'd rather them put a gun, and it's, it's, it's less vicious. Stabbing someone, John, is the most vicious way to do to anything or anyone. That's, it's not good, man. It's not good seeing the youths of today doing that. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm scally, scally myself in the bill, but there's, there's a scallies and scally. That's just ruthless, vermin behaviour. What's the parents doing? What's, what's going, what, what's going on? Yeah. Like, what is happening, man? When 13 year olds are going around stabbing each other, what's going on? Mm. It's not I, good, mate. I certainly don't have the answers, but I'm glad to see you guys, who the youngsters can look up to, Hopefully, are, yeah. are doing some positive Hopefully. stuff. Well, let's talk about some other positive stuff and Leon, because I saw some photos of him coming down to the gym and getting some work in, which warmed my heart. Oh, yeah, right. right. Yeah. I've seen Leon work. <laughs> um, I, it warmed my heart because you two were going at each other yeah. when you were competing I for the him. line. Right. <laughs> all he was like, "Till, did you mean that?" I was like, "Absolutely, Leon." <laughs> <laughs> It's all, it's all fun and games, oh, and he came down here to your mat with your coach yeah, as yeah. well. What, what was it like? Good mate, we, uh, we, we didn't train, uh, we did, he, Leon was just like, listen, I just want to come up and get some work. So we had a little bit of training together and then we just, he was like, I want to do some pads with Carl. I was like, sad. Carl got him on the pad, he was like, brilliant. And then we done some uh, circuits over there, we done some circuits and that, and then he was, he was, I was just like, how long are you down for? He was like, I'm going home tomorrow. I was like, let's go, off, let's go off for a drink tonight, then I'll go for a little pint here and take, take some food and that. He was like, sad. Boss, mate. Boss. Yeah. And I train with a strength and conditioning coach now, Johnny, uh, Johnny Reynolds, who train his, his brother, Johnny Reynolds' brother, uh, I think his name's Jamie, he trains Anthony Joshua. Johnny trains myself, Leon, Callum, uh, Liam, uh, Tasha, uh, all the guys from Gallagher's gym uh, trains. Lo loads and loads of guys. Don't want to miss anyone out because. Yeah. But top level coach. Top level coach. Because you them. weren't really able to lift any weights as a welterweight because you were managing your weight so much. Yeah, so yeah. this is like a new thing for you. Yeah, look at the guns, Jake. <laughs> look at the How much are you enjoying that, that process? It. And I love something different, mate. Something that I can see different types of fitness and different types of strength. It's just good to change it up in a bit. It's just good to evolve, John, isn't it? You've got to always be evolving. There's somewhere, some, somewhere out there, somewhere, someone's evolving more at a higher rate than you are. So you gotta get the clocks going, you gotta evolve. So maybe that's my other little bit of evolving. I always say it, you know I always say it. But uh, he's a brilliant coach. He was like, Till, we need to hook up with you and Leon. So Leon come up on it, it was brilliant. So, 
what kind of, on the back of that, the strength training, the time away, the hunger, what kind of Darren should we expect the next time you walk into that it's octagon? It's the same, Darren, mate. You know, I'm one of we the won a better Darren than the last one. Oh, I, was, I was about to say, <laughs> I'm one of the best in the world and I'm going to show every time I fight. I never leave the gym. I'm always trying to evolve. I'm always trying to get better. I'm always trying to better myself into a better person. You know, so ultimately, you want to be a better person, a better martial artist, you know, and a better fighter. And all them things rolled into one. Mix for success, recipe for success. Derek's a bum. So, <laughs> sorry, D. Sorry, lad. Derek's a bum. I think on that note we should wrap, wrap this up. But Dan, it's always good to, good to catch up. Thank you, and hopefully the next time we do this, we'll have some massive things to be talking about as well. In the car, John, don't we? Yeah, let's do it in the car next time. Car, yeah. Bugatti, is it? McGregor, hello, can I have a Bugatti? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time. Yeah. Cheers, Sweet mate. Eat. Thank you.